Hidden beneath banks of snow and skittering across the permafrost lies one of the most elusive orders of insects. Residing in isolated caves, glaciers, and mountainous alpine habitats, the ice crawlers are extremophiles that truly live up to their name. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. Today, we're talking about the Gorilla Bladidea, also known as the Ice Crawlers. You may also hear them referred to as the Rock Crawlers, but Ice Crawlers is way cooler, so we're going with that. This is a very small order, consisting of only around 30 or so living species. It's actually the second smallest insect order next to the Mantaphasmatodia, which we'll cover next time. The Gorilla Bladidea are a funky group in more ways than one. Even their evolutionary history is highly contested. Which I guess isn't that surprising. Taxonomists love to argue, and you can find multiple debates on the phylogeny of nearly every order, especially given recent advancements in genetic sequencing. And hey, no hate. That's just how progress works in taxonomy. The main discourse with this order is whether to treat the Gorilla Bladidea the Ice Crawlers, and the Mantaphasmatodia, the Gladiators, as one order or two. When combined, they're usually referred to as the Notoptera. I decided to treat them as two, and that seems to be the prevailing decision among taxonomists. The Gorilla Bladidea look a bit like a Frankenstein's monster version of an insect, and it can be difficult to get an ID off just a quick glance. The name Gorilla Bladidea even translates to cricket cockroach as Gorillidae is the family of crickets, and Bladidea is the order of cockroaches. Which, hey, fair enough. The ice walkers have chewing mouth parts, long bodies, long antennae, long cerci, long ovipositors if they're female, and long legs adapted for running, which we call cursorial legs. Long is the name of the game here. It can also help to ID Gorilla Bladids on what they don't have, they lack wings, and their eyes are often heavily reduced or even absent. Ice crawlers are hemimetabolous, meaning they have an incomplete three-stage metamorphosis, going from egg to nymph to adult. Little is known about the earlier stages of Gorilla Blatted development. The eggs are dark in color and laid in sheltered areas, such as under rocks or in moss in their chilly habitats. These eggs can remain dormant for years before hatching. After hatching, the nymphs will forage around the rocks and snow for dead or stranded arthropods. The nymphs can take years to fully develop, and the full ice walker life cycle can take up to seven. Adults are also mainly scavengers. However, ice walkers can also be opportunistic predators. You can't afford to pass up a meal in such hostile environments as glaciers and caves. Should food be scarce, Gorilla Bladids will also make use of decaying plant matter for sustenance. They learn to make do. In terms of mating, the trend of taking things slow continues. Gorilla Bladids can take multiple hours in their copulation, and even after mating, the female may not lay her eggs for another month or two, and thus the long, arduous cycle continues. Though they can thrive in some pretty low temperatures, ice crawlers are surprisingly limited in the range of temperatures that they can tolerate. They really don't do great at temperatures less than a couple degrees below freezing, as ice formation in their bodies can kill them. So oftentimes they'll hide underneath shelter or beneath the snowbank to escape the cold. Most species seem to target microclimates around 0 to 8 degrees. Even brief periods of exposure to higher temperatures, such as around 26 degrees Celsius, can kill them. So if you see one, try not to handle it as your body heat is a legitimate threat. I can't really think of a situation in which someone would consider an ice crawler a pest. Unless you're also scavenging around for dead bugs in the snow, in which I guess they're your competition. Because of the extreme environments they live in, it can be hard to picture just how they're impacting our ecosystems. But because of their presence in these extreme habitats, it makes their role as a nutrient cycler very important. These plants and small arthropods also living in these glaciers and ice caves are reliant on things like the ice walker to recycle nutrients back into the ecosystem. But their proclivity for low temperature ecosystems puts them at risk, 
As we talked about, even a few degrees can make a big impact on these buggers, which makes climate change a little bit worrisome. Loss of permafrost, melting glaciers, and intrusion of less cold-tolerant species are not small issues for the Gorilla Blattidea. Since they're extremophiles, there isn't a ton you can do on your own property to boost their numbers. However, if you do happen to live in an area where they can be found, try to preserve the logs, stones, and other potential shelters on your land. A diverse landscape means more microhabitats and microclimates so it'll be easier for an ice walker to find one that suits its needs. Which honestly is just a good tip overall. A diverse landscape is normally a happy one, catering to more species and providing more niches for the local arthropods to fill. I hope I could shed some light on this overlooked insect order. And as always, if you like the content, please remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date with future orders. And if you have any fun facts from this group, or if you've just managed to see one, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Peace, y'all.